Gunsmoke. Brought to you by Chesterfield. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed thanks to Accuray. They satisfy the most. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. the cattle business. Yeah, they shipped a thousand head out in the Santa Fe this morning. Guess I can afford to buy you a drink. Well, thanks, Bars, but I hear Doc Adams has been looking all over for me. I better go find him. Uh, he's in here a while ago talking to Kitty. Huh? Oh, here she comes. Maybe she knows where he went. Matt? Oh, Kitty. Hello, Mr. Bowers. Hello, Kitty. Doc had to leave, Matt. They called him out at the Smith place on an emergency, but he asked me to give you a message. Oh? Uh-huh. You know, Ed Thorpe and his wife... Well, sure, I know. Yeah, they got a little piece of land right on the south edge of my ranch. They're not doing very good, though. Well, they sure aren't, according to Doc. He was out there last night, and he'd planned to go back for him today. To go back for him? They have to be brought into town, Matt. They've got spotted fever, both of them. Yeah, they got a little baby out there, too. Well, that's why Doc says somebody's got to fetch all three of them in the Dodge where they can be taken care of. Well, I'll find a wagon and go after them tomorrow. We couldn't get them back tonight, anyway. You want some help, Marshal? I got a pack of cowboys that ain't earning their feed. Well, thanks, Bars, but Chester and I can manage. You might need some help. Oh, what do you mean? Ed Thorpe. Sick as he may be, he'll get a gun and fight before he lets you carry him off that place. I know him. Well, then he can stay there, but I'm going to bring his wife and child in. All right, but you keep an eye on him. He can be a bad one. This place, Mr. Young? Yeah, I know, Chester, but I want to meet these people. They must be new. Come on. How do you know they're new? You ain't been out this way in over a year. Well, all the more reason to meet them. Now, let's walk around back. I thought I saw somebody there. <laughs> nothing but a sod hut and blow dirt. I must be living on nothing. Well, it doesn't look like it, Chester. Huh? Why, he's butchering a calf. Now, where'd he get that? Well, he sure didn't raise it on those weeds as woman's trying to hoe. Hello. What are you men doing here? I'm Marshal Dillon from Dodge, uh, this Chester Proudfoot. I do. Something wrong, Marshal? No. Except your hat's gonna get all bloody where you laid it on this calf. Need it be. Here. You got sunstroke without a hat. All right. So I was trying to cover up Emmett Bowers' brain. We're starving out here, Marshal. I had to kill that calf. You ain't going to arrest my husband, are you, Marshal? No, ma'am. Not unless Emmett Bowers complains. Well, Joe had to do it, Marshal. We we just can't go on without something to eat. Look where I've been hoeing over there. I couldn't plant enough for hardly anything to come up. We can't afford no more seed up. Our credits run out and dodge. Well, that ground doesn't even look like it's been plowed. I've done the best I could. It ain't easy. No, ma'am. Not for a woman. 
Uh, we're on our way over to Ed Thorpe's. I guess you know that they got spotted fever. I was there this morning. Ed Thorpe's dead, died in the night, I guess. She didn't tell me that, Joe. You mean you left Miss Thorpe and the baby alone over there? I ain't gonna chance catching no fever. But, Joe, the baby... My woman's always worrying about babies. It's only because she can't have none, I guess. She's like one of them there dry gourds. Don't, Joe. You're putting shame on me. Uh, Chester. Yes, sir? Let's get out of here. Oh, uh, Miss Nader. Yes, Marshal? Next time you're in Dodge, uh, come see me, huh? I'll get you some seed to plant. That whistling man, Bobby Haggard, really started something. Tonight, the Calypso boys join in. Ready, amigos? Packs more pleasure. Packs more pleasure. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. It stands to reason a cigarette made better and packed better smokes better, tastes better. And Chesterfield is more perfectly packed by Accuray. This electronic miracle removes human error in cigarette manufacture. So Accuray Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips, mild yet deeply satisfying. Yes, Chesterfield gives you something no other cigarette can give you. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. By Chesterfield, mild, yet they satisfy the most. I thought we wouldn't never make dogs tonight. How's the baby, Chester? Well, it's asleep anyway. Guess I've been holding it right, huh? Uh, just like a mother. Oh, I am not. <laughs> oh, there's Doc waiting for us. All right. Huh. You just sit tight a minute, Chester. We'll help you with the baby. I hope it don't wake up or anything. Matt, where are Ed Thorpe and his wife? Well, Ed died before we got there, Doc. Miss Thorpe's lying down in the wagon back there. We uh, covered her up good. She's been asleep most of the way. Oh. Mrs. Thorpe? She's still asleep. Give me a hand up, Matt. Yeah. Sit. Okay. Oh, Mrs. Thorpe? What's the matter, Doc? She's not asleep, Matt. She's dead. No. Died on the way in, I guess. Now we got a baby to take care of. You know, Doc, I, I think she knew she was going to die. Why? I, just before we left her place, she told me that if anything happened to her, the baby was to be put in Ma Smalley's care. And Ma Smalley was to have complete charge over him. Well, what she says goes... Well, Ma's a widow. She's had kids herself. That was a good choice. Yeah. But she's too old to raise them herself, man. Well, we'll worry about that later, Doc. Let's get busy. Have you been, Miss Nadler? Pretty good, Marshal. Marshal, Mrs. Nadler wants to adopt the Thorpe baby. Oh? 
Well, Miss Thorpe left the baby in your charge, Ma. It's all up to you. Well, I've had him over a week, Marshal, and I'm going to keep him a while longer so he'll be near Doc just in case. But Mrs. Nadler here seems like a mighty fine woman to me. And I'd, I'd let her take that baby, only I'm worried about one thing. I, I told her, Marshal, and the, the truth, and she's afraid maybe Joe and I can't make a go of it out there. You remember what you said when you was leaving that day? I said to come to see me, I'd help you get some seed to plant. Well, now, that's all I need. I, I get a little corn up there. I'm, I might even raise a few hogs. I work awful hard, Marshal. I promise I will. She gets started. She can have the baby, Marshal. Uh, Miss Nadler, why don't you come by my office before you leave town? I'm going to the store here and have a talk with Mr. Jonas now. Oh, Marshal, I do thank you. Come on back to the house, Mrs. Nadler. All right. You can look at him. Oh, hello, Marshal. Hello, Jonas. Well, what can I sell you today? Well, I came by to see you about Miss Nadler. You, you know her, don't you? Yeah, of course I do. Joe Nadler's out back in the stock room right now. Oh, he is? Yeah. Hey, Nadler, come in here a minute. He's buying himself a new pair of boots, Marshal. Uh, I thought their credit had run out. Oh, well, Nadler's doing better now. He started bringing meat into Delmonico's and a couple other eating places and paid up part of his bill already, ain't you, Nadler? I don't know as I like you talking about my private affairs, Jonas. Oh, no harm. It's only Marshal Dillon. Come on, Nadler. Those are good-looking boots. They ought to be. Them's the best I stock. Them's $20 boots. $20. I'd buy a whole wagon load of seed, Nadler. You telling me how to spend my money? Does your wife know you've been doing better lately? Family matters ain't no concern of the law. Yours are. And if it wasn't for your wife, I wouldn't bother just warning you. But because of her, I'm telling you to take off those boots and buy some seed and whatever else you need to grow corn with. Now, you look here, You shut up! I'm giving you a chance, Nadler, and three days from now, I'm riding out to see what you've done with it. It's up to you whether or not you'll be riding back with me. out the natives? Ah, uh, we can wait another day, Chester. You know what? I don't think you want to go at all. Yeah, you're right, I don't. Hello, Marshal. Bars. Chester. Oh, Mr. Bars. I was just up at Delmonico's, Marshal, having myself a feed. Oh, good. How was it? It was fine, till I went out back and got a talking with the cook. Oh? Marshal, I reckon any man's got a right to complain when he goes to a restaurant and finds himself eating his own beef. I know about that, boys. You do? And why ain't you done nothing about it? Oh, because of Ms. Nadler, I guess. Look, Marshal, I'm a rich man. I don't mind a nester slaughtering one of my calves when he's starving. And nobody's going to start selling my beef. I'll kill him. He keeps that up. All right, I'll handle it, boys. I admire that woman, too, Marshal, but letting him get by with rustling ain't going to help her. Uh, uh, by the way, Ma Smalley brought some pies down to the kitchen while I was there. She's waiting outside here. She wants to talk to you. Get you right out. Thanks, Jimmy. Hello, Ma. You riding out to Nadler's, Marshal? I am. Then you tell her I'm sorry. Tell her I think she's a good woman, but I can't let that baby go into the home of a cow thief. Now, oh. that'll break her heart, Mom. Son, I got a trust put in me. All right, I'll tell her. <laughs> Say, where are you listening to Gunsmoke? In your car? Getting ready for dinner? Oh, I see. Just relaxing in your favorite easy chair. 
Well, I'd say you're in a good spot right now to really enjoy a Chesterfield. You see, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. It stands to reason. A cigarette made better and packed better smokes better, tastes better. And Chesterfield is more perfectly packed by Accuray. This electronic miracle removes human error in cigarette manufacture. So Accuray Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips, mild, yet deeply satisfying. Yes, Chesterfield gives you something no other cigarette can give you. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. By Chesterfield. Mild. Yet they satisfy the most. Marshal. Hello, Chester. Hi, ma'am. What brings you out here, Marshal? Uh, is your husband home? No, he's been gone since morning. Oh. Uh, Miss Nadler, do you know that he's been slaughtering Emmett Bowers' beef? Oh. Mr. Bowers complained about it. About that calf? Well, it's more than that one calf, Miss Nadler. He's been selling meat around Dodge lately. So that's what he had in the wagon. Now, I know you had nothing to do with it, Miss Nadler, but uh, I hate to tell you this, but Ma Smalley isn't going to let you have the baby. Oh. Well, she's she's right, Marshal. It, it wouldn't be fitting. Mr. Dillon, look. Huh? Over yonder. That's Emmett Bars. I'll be back, Miss Nadler. I'm going to go talk to him. Them other two must be riders of his, huh? Yeah. I thought I might find you here, Marshal. There's something wrong, Bowers? One of my men has been murdered. We found him out yonder about five miles. He'd been left for dead, but he talked a little. Well, what happened? He's gone now, Marshal, so you'll have to take our word for what he told us. All right. You run across Joe Nadler, slaughtering another steer. Nadler shot him? That's right. Anything else? Only that Nadler got on his horse and headed for Dodge. I guess he figures he'll get caught and he might as well get drunk one more time. He'll get caught. I promise you that, boys. found him, Mr. Dillon. He's in there getting drunk at the bar. Well, it's taken us long enough. Everybody in town must know I'm after him by now. There, see him? Yeah, I see him. Stop there, Marshal. Don't you come no closer. Put that gun away, Nadler. I saw Chester. I knew you'd be in here next. Why, Nidler? You don't fool me. You know all about it. You admit killing that rider? I knew when I shot him I couldn't get by with it. My horse's tracks was all over the place. Well, don't make it any worse than it is. I told you not to come no closer. Put your gun on the bar, Nadler. You watch what I'm going to do with it. No, Nadler, don't. Why not? Hit you, didn't I? Now I'm going to kill you. You hurt bad, Mr. Dillon? He hit me in the arm, Chester, but I'll be all right. You killed him. 
Yeah. Do something with him, will you? I'm going over to Doc's. Yes, sir, I will. Alvin. Marshal Dillon? What? Oh, Ma Smalley. Why, you've been hurt. Oh, it's not bad, Ma. What about Joe Nadler? He's dead. Well, I figured he would be. I heard you was looking for him. That's why I followed you down here. Look, my arm's bleeding some, Ma. I better get over to Doc's. Well, you hear me out first, Marshal. Yeah, of course, Ma. Go ahead. You'll be the one to tell Mrs. Nadler about him, won't you? I guess so. Take a wagon with you, Marshal. What? A woman can't live out there alone. Now, I got an extra room at my house if she'll help with the work. Well, what about the baby? It'll be her baby, Marshal. And tell her I won't interfere none, neither. Yeah, I sure will, Ma. I'll tell her all that. I'll go out first thing in the morning. Well, you won't go nowhere. You just stand here gabbing all night. That arm's bleeding, Marshal. You ought to go get it fixed, you hear? Yeah, you're right, Ma. <laughs> but then you pretty off on a har. In a moment, our star, William Conrad. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. A cigarette made better and packed better smokes better, tastes better. And Chesterfield is more perfectly packed by Accuray. This electronic miracle removes human error in cigarette manufacture. So Accuray Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips. Chesterfield, mild, yet they satisfy the most. You know... The buffalo hunters killed off the entire High Plains herd in a few short years, leaving the Indians to starve. And next week, this hunger sets off an Indian massacre. And that was the West. Good night. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin, John Daner, Jeanette Nolan, Virginia Christine, and Frank Cady. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNair is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Help today and hope tomorrow is the slogan of the 7th Annual United Cerebral Palsy Drive. Support United Cerebral Palsy. Live modern. Smoke L&M. Live modern. Change to L&M. Only with L&M can you enjoy the full, exciting flavor of today's finest tobaccos through the modern miracle of the pure white miracle tip. So light up. Free up. Let your taste come alive. Live modern. Smoke L&M. Live modern. Change to L&M. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on Gunsmoke.